real estate wholesaling. Is it illegal? Do you really know? Well, we know, and we're about to show you right now. If you like this content, which I'm sure you do, click the bell in the top right corner and subscribe. It's A-Z-R-E-I-A, -E that's Azria. Let's get clarity on real estate wholesaling. What is it? And then we'll talk about, is it illegal? So what is real estate wholesaling? Real estate wholesaling is basically getting the property under contract and then finding an end buyer to then wholesale that property to. So I'm gonna walk you through it, show you on this diagram real quick. Please, I'm not an artist, but you'll, you'll understand what I'm driving at, okay? So let's just say Chuck or Charles this is the, the wholesaler right here. And he's interested in getting into real estate. But unfortunately, he really don't have a lot of money to get started with. So we always encourage people to start with something that's called real estate wholesaling to increase your capital so you can get started as a fix and flipper or buy and hold guy or something like that. So Charles, what he's going to do, he's going to try and find Susan, who's a motivated seller, right? Um, so what Charles is gonna do, he's gonna start doing some marketing. So let's start right here. What kind of marketing is he going to do? Charles is going to start with either cold calling, direct mail, text messaging, or some other form of marketing. And what his marketing is saying is, Susan or anybody like Susan, if you're going through a divorce, if you are a tired landlord, if you are have property liens or anything like that, for example, we wanna market to you and say, hey, we can help you out with this problem. We can help you out with either one of these situations and there are much more. So basically what Charles does is he reach out to Susan. Susan raises her hand and says, yes, Charles, I have a problem. I'm a tired landlord. I have a tenant in the property and the tenant is not paying and we need to get them out so we can sell the property. Charles, now what he's done is he looks at Susan's property and he says, okay, Susan, generally your property is worth, let's just say $300,000. That's the ARV that's the after repair value after the property is completely fixed up in great condition this is what it will sell for on the market but Susan's property is not in that condition and also Susan is going through a problem because she has a tenant that she needs to get rid of in order to sell the property but Charles can buy the property with the tenant. That's another story on another date, but we'll talk about this. So Charles goes out, he contacts Susan. Susan says, yes, I wanna sell. Charles says, unfortunately, I can purchase this property, fortunately, but unfortunately, I can't give you $300,000. Because of all of the problems that's going on with the property, the tenant is in the property, tenant tore the property up, I can only offer you $200,000 for the property. So there is some instant equity there. You can see Charles is getting the property for $200,000 where the property is originally ARV is $300,000. So what does Charles do right now? So Charles creates a contract, a written agreement with Susan. So I'll just say PC for purchase contract, an agreement between Charles and Susan saying that Charles is willing to buy the property for $200,000 as is, no realtor fees, no commissions. And again, she don't have to do anything with the property. So Susan says, you know what? I completely agree. I definitely want to do that. I know the property completely fixed up is worth $300,000, but I don't have the time, the money, or the energy to put into the property in order to get it sold for $300,000. So Charles, I will take your $200,000 offer. Charles agrees. He sends this directly to the title company or an attorney, and now Charles is under contract. Now there's some things in between like earnest money deposit, things like that, that Charles would have to furnish just to say to Susan that I am invested in this property and in this transaction. So the property is under contract right now. Susan can no longer sell this property to anyone else. Even if somebody comes back and say, okay, I'll offer you $205,000 or I'll offer you $210,000. She cannot sell this property because she is under contract with Charles. So the next thing Charles need to do is turn his marketing 
back on. So now we want to start marketing again. But now what we want to do is we want to find Butch, who is a fix and flipper, and he has a lot of money, he's experienced, and he's ready to do his next deal. So Charles does all of the marketing, he finds Butch, Butch raises his hand, Butch says, I like that property on 123 Main Street that you got from Susan. What do I need to do in order to get this property? Charles offer Butch the opportunity to go and walk this property, go and take a look at it. Let's make sure that you really like this property, Butch, before we enter into an agreement for you to have this property. Charles contacts Susan, let Susan know, hey, I have somebody that's gonna come over, take a look at the property, walk through it. We just wanna verify everything with the property. We wanna verify that the property is still standing, that there's three bedrooms, two bathrooms, because guess what? Charles is not a contractor, so he don't know exactly what to look for. Basically, what Butch is doing is going to look at the property to see how much money he needs to put into it in order for him to make a profit on this deal. Butch goes, walks the property, looks at it, understands that the property do need some work, but he's still interested in the property. So Butch contacts Charles and says, yes, Charles, I want this property. I can pay $210,000 for this property. Now, mind you, remember, Charles got the property for $200,000. It's worth $300,000 fixed up. Butch is willing to pay $210,000 for it. Now everybody is happy. Susan sold the property for $200,000. So Charles is happy because he made $10,000 because this is the delta between the $200,000 that he offered Susan and the $210,000 that Butch is willing to pay for it. So he walks away with the $10,000 profit and Butch is happy because now he has a property that he paid $210,000 for, but it's really worth $300,000, okay? So that is real estate wholesaling in a nutshell. Now the question is, is this illegal? Is Charles taking advantage of Susan and can Charles do this without a license, without being a realtor? So the answer to that question is yes, he can wholesale this property and not get, not get in trouble. The only caveat to it is there are certain states where this is illegal. Arizona is not one. Is wholesaling illegal in Arizona? Absolutely not. You can definitely wholesale in the great state of Arizona and it not be illegal. So this is Marcus Maloney with AZ Rhea signing off, letting you all know that wholesaling in Arizona is not illegal. That's it. Thank you guys for being here. Remember, subscribe, click the ding, click the bell in the top right hand corner and come on, get more content like this on a weekly basis. And we also have weekly classes in person that you can attend.